It is a common belief that taking the flesh feeds the beast within, they reply. Well, we're all monsters, but those that partake, I would call them more animal. Nevertheless, it's typically protocol to eliminate the flesh eaters, but you're still a young one, lacking education and a sire. This is your chance at salvation. They let out a dry laugh. It does not sound natural. Whatever farce of salvation one of our kind can get, anyway. You nod. The hanger. The hanger. <laughs> the hunger inside you grows. Are they done? I suppose it would be too much to instruct you on every bit of vampire etiquette, so I'll leave it at that for you for today. You will no longer eat flesh. It is no longer a request. Or it is not a request. Good lord. Their eyes narrow as they meet yours. You avert your gaze. They sigh. There's a working bathroom on the third floor. First door on your right. Please try to be a little less... When you meet me here again tomorrow... Oh, they gesture generally in your direction. I, uh... Forgot I'm not on face cam, sorry. You're free to wander the building as you like, but I would prefer it if you did not leave for now. Sounds more like a threat than just a preference. You're like a little you're you're a little fr <laughs> little frightened of what might happen should you refuse to comply. You walk around the hotel as permitted. Most of the rooms are guest rooms. There are a number of them. Vampires. Well, you're kind, you suppose, living here, it seems. No one want, or no one seems to want to speak to you, and you care little. They're unimportant. Only one thing matters. You are hungry. There is little to do within the hotel premises, but you locate several rooms of interest. A kitchen, a library, a game room. I want to go to the game room. You step into the game room. It is old-fashioned. No arcade games, but there is a chess set. A table with playing cards and a dartboard. There's no one else in the room aside from you. There is no one to consult with, so you decide on whatever you like. Darts? Oh, on whatever you like. Darts, okay. Concentrate on it hard enough and maybe it will be enough to distract you. As you grab a set of darts, you get the impression that you were once fond of this game. If you recall correctly from your very hazy memories, you are pretty good at it. You squint as you try to aim your first shot and you... Miss? You miss completely! The dart lands itself on the wall, nowhere near the dartboard. You look down at your right hand. It is shaking. You grab at it with your left. Your left hand is also shaking. Your hands are shaking uncontrollably. How long have they been doing that? It's clear that darts is out of the question. What were you thinking, trying to replace your hunger with a silly game? If you cannot eat, you feel as though you may as well go to bed. You decide to go to bed early, your stomach threatening to devour you from inside. Try your best to, to, do, to, do, 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 to control it, to ignore it. You do not want to be an outsider. You do not want to be eliminated. You're not hungry. You are not hungry. You are not hungry. Lies. You tell lies. You try to comfort yourself with lies, but they do not sate your hunger. You pull the covers, still caked with blood, dried, spill oil. Un inedible up over your head it takes you a long time to fall asleep it is a restless sleep and you do not dream you are hungry you wake up there's no knock on the door no arrogant voice what time is it Catch sight of the slimmest silver sliver of light falling across the floor of your room. It must have missed a spot while boarding up the windows. It's probably a bit before sunset. Everyone else must be asleep. 
You are awake. You are hungry. You lay there under your covers. You wonder if you should get up. You run through the possibilities in your mind. You didn't see much possible places to stash food while you were exploring yesterday. But maybe you missed a place? You groan. You're hungry, but you're also exhausted. You're not sure if you can even summon the energy to get up to look for food. Maybe it would be best if you tried to get back to sleep. After all, you're pretty sure they will allow you to at least or they will allow you at least a mug again when it's time to get up and meet them. On the other hand, you are very hungry. The pitiful of full amount they are sure to offer you will not be enough. Fuck you, I'm hungry. I'm gonna die, but I'm hungry. You shuffle off your covers and leave your room, heading down the stairs. You don't know where you're going, but your legs walk on their own. You're hungry. You're so hungry. You are so desperately hungry, you care about little else. You walk. You are on, ground f on the ground floor. You're careful to stay within the shadowy hallway and not venture out into the main lobby of the hotel, flooded with orange sunlight. You can already picture yourself burning up just looking at it. Why hasn't anyone boarded those windows up? There's little to be found in this hallway. The kitchen, a cafe, and a guest room with a slightly ajar door. Ooh. I want to go back. Oh, I can't save! Shoot! The kitchen is of no use. Empty blood packets and little else. It is not enough. Even full blood packets would not be enough. Flesh. You crave flesh. You're disgusted with the paltry offing offerings. Exhausted from your trip to the kitchen and convinced you would not find food in this hotel, you drag yourself back to your bedroom. You pull your co the covers back over your head. Sleep does not come, but they do. Soon. Another knock on your door. Another announcement. The sun is set. They do not enter, but instead you hear footsteps paddling or padding away. You get up, struggling to ignore the ever-growing pain within your very core. You remember them mentioning the functional shower on the third floor. Perhaps that will take your mind off things. You grab another set of clothing from the closet and you head upstairs. First door on your right. You step into the bathroom. The shower is more modern than the rickety old bathtub in your room. A new addition, probably. You peel off the filthy clothes, sticking to the er, uh, sticking to the dried blood. Oh, sticking to the dried blood still caked on your body, and switch the shower on. Water pours out, running in rivulets down your body. Soap is apparently a luxury that doesn't exist in this bathroom, so you scrub. You scrub at the blood, and it washes away easily, but the smell doesn't. You smell of blood. You smell of human. You don't know if it's your mind playing tricks on you. Guilt and hunger intermingle. Perhaps they are one and the same. All you know is the all-consuming void within you. It hurts. You switch off the shower and towel off, putting on another set of vaguely musty-smelling musty clothes. Out of habit, you turn to the sink to look yourself over in the mirror. There is no mirror. You wonder if you might be able to convince them to pick up some soap for this bathroom? Lavender scented, maybe. As you leave. You catch yourself thinking as though you were intending to settle here, amongst the rest of your kind. I mean, it does not seem too bad of a life, you think. Living amongst others like you. Struggling with the hunger together. Though it doesn't seem to affect them as badly as it does you. You wonder if all young ones go through the same things you, sh you are going through. It is hard. It is suffering. In case you've dallied long enough, you make your way to meet them again. Are you quite sure you've bathed? 
Another day. Night. Rather, you're still adjusting. Another pleasant greeting. It is a question you do not answer. You're offered two mugs today. You're not thankful. It is not enough. You chug them straight away, licking around the edges of the mug to make sure you haven't wasted a bit. It is not enough. I wanted to ask you something. They start. They do not have a mug today. It's a shame. You may have been able to snake their mug again. They are so small. They need to eat more. But if they won't, what harm is it in helping them finish their meal? Waste not want... Remember? You do not realize you've inadvertently tuned out of most of their question. Focused on... Or focused as you are on that imaginary third mug. They look at you expectantly. You should probably apologize, but you don't feel sorry. I'm gonna do it. Sorry. You offer half-heartedly, or you offer half-heartedly, running your fingers along the bottom mug, fruitlessly trying to stretch out your paltry rations. I said, do you remember anything about yourself? A name, perhaps? That question is enough to distract you from your hunger. A little. Oh, a little. The, you think. A name. Something that should be simple. You remember streets you passed on the way to work. Books you liked and games you played, and yet... A name? You rack your mind for any such thing. It's not hard. It's a name. It's what people call you. Your friends, your family, your colleagues. You sift through meaningless words and sounds. None of them seem to matter. Until you come across two words. Yes, this is it. This is yours. You, s you sound the words out, your own name... Uh, yeah, your own name feels for foreign in your mouth, your tongue tripping over the vowels awkwardly. They do not seem surprised that it took so long for you to remember your own name. It is common for young ones to lose their memories from before they returned. It is helpful that you at least remember that much. You wonder why they wanted to know. Come to think of it, you still haven't asked their net. Well, that is all I wanted to know right now. Should you need anything, my door is the fourth from the left on the ground floor. Please do not leave the hotel for today. They leave before you can get another word in. You move to follow, but they're long gone. For someone with such short legs, they sure are fast. You find yourself sat on a slightly lump... Slum... Blah, 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 blah. You find yourself sat on a slightly lumpy armchair in the lobby. Not knowing what you to do with yourself for today. The hunger wears you down and you are tired. The illumination of a street lamp, a single one and this is a dimly lit street, bleeds into the window and spills onto the damaged carpeting. You'd think they'd patch up the windows. Safety hazard that. You say to no one in particular, but a voice to your left laughs. It's a hearty laugh, full of character and life. You turn to face the source of the sound. The owner of a voice is a dark is a goodness. The owner of the voice is a girl with a head of wild curls. The first thing that strikes you is that she's the act, exact opposite of them, tall and dark. You can't help but compare the two. You've had very little human, well, undead, whatever, interaction recently. You're a young one, aren't you? You're not sure if you're up for making conversation, though it might help. The hunger turns inside you, and it is pain. It is suffering. You're suffering. Yeah, you offer her little, but she runs with it. You can't manage much, but you're trying. It's an adjustment. You'll get used to it soon enough. Her words are not much of a comfort. You're... What's their face? You know, their pet project or something. Heard they picked you up off the street. A real sight and all. You nod. It's tiring. I apparently need to learn some rules about your society or something. Guess that they'll release me back into the wild, as it were. Our society? You're one of us now, she says. 
Don't mind them too much. They can be a bit of a tosser. <laughs> Tell you what, though. And don't take this the wrong way, but you look awful. Bet you're hungry. Hungry. You're hungry. Your eyes light up at the prospect of food. She laughs again, fumbling in her coat pocket and producing a packet of blood. She tosses it to you as she shoots a sideways glance to the grandfather clock. Ah, I gotta run now, but it's nice talking to you. She calls as she heads out the front door. Cheers, you mumble. No, oh, well, that was not mumbling, but anyway. Tearing into the packet, the contents spurt out, splashing you. You're careful to lap up the bits you notice strewn out on your hands and arms before devouring the rest of the packet. You're still not satisfied, but you're less hungry than before. The liquid you consumed slashes around your insides as you inspect your hands for any last traces of the packet. There's nothing left on your hands, and as you mourn the last of your snack, you reflect on the short exchange of words just now. The girl seemed to be full of energy, despite being what she is, what you are. She seemed alive. Human. You wish you'd asked for her name. Come to think of it, maybe you should ask their name. They did say you could find them in their room. Fourth from the left. You knock, but there is no response. You step inside. Careful to close the door behind you. Someone might run into it if you left it open in the hallway. You take in your surroundings. The first thing that catches your eye is the row of windows. Not only are they boarded up, they're fitted with what seems like blackout curtains. <laughs> Clearly someone is paranoid. The contents of the room are fairly similar to yours, except in far better condition. Compared to the rest of the hotel, the furniture is modern. A matching set, even. You cast a glance around. The bed is made. The linens looking freshly laundered. Is there a laundry room here? The lamp on the nightstand is dust-free, and within the closet hangs a row of impeccably tailored clothing. You even take a quick look in their bathroom, testing out the knobs. Of course, their bathroom works. The one thing they've got in here that you haven't is a desk. However, you hear footsteps approaching the door and you wonder if you should hide instead of investigating. Oh, fuck you. You throw caution to the wind, heading over to the desk. Papers, papers, papers. Nothing se that seems important. Just a load of writing. You take care not to knock anything out of place. One thing catches your eye. A small memo pad. The top sheet has two words written on it. They're familiar. Your name. Rustling sound at the door distracts you, and you drop the pad. You walk over to the door, curiously. From the sound of the footsteps, whoever was there is now gone. You look at the floor. There's a slim file. Your name is written on it. You immediately open it. There's little on it but basic information. Your name that you already knew, though it is surprising a comfort to have it confirmed. Your age? Are you really that old? Gender? Height? Bare bones. You look to the bottom of the page. Your address. You have a home! You remembered the walks to work, but you didn't remember where you were walking from, or even to. This new information is, li is a little comforting. You feel li less like them, and more like whoever you used to be. You're sure of it now. Going home will ease your suffering. Surely. They did not say, or they did say not to leave, though. You struggle a bit internally. It's not as though you intend to stay at home once you get back. They made themselves clear that you were to be educated, but you're having a difficult time. Remembering your name was a blessing, a reminder of your human self. You can learn to be some semblance of a human. Not the mom monster someone sired you into. Force. Oh, your scraps of. Scrap bits of your humanity, your name, your address, are a lifeboat in this sea you have found yourself cast into. And they can't blame you for trying to help yourself after all. You'll be back before sunrise, you reason with yourself. 
place yourself, you place the foil back where you found it and you grit your teeth, ready to set out into the night. The address is clear in your mind. It's not far. You walk fast, keeping your head down, avoiding people on the streets. The hunger still calls to you. You cling to your name. You cling to the home you are returning to. You're not a monster. You will burn. You approach your first destination. The alley where it began. Where you presumably where you were presumably sired and subsequently dumped. There is no police tape, no white outline. It's as if nothing happened. They took care of it. You make a mental note to thank them for all the help when you return to the hotel. We have somewhere to be right now. If you could just Ah, there it is. You reach behind the dumpster, fingers straining, grasping, and you grab hold of it. A key. It feels like yours. It feels like home. Clutching your prize to your chest, you continue on to your destination. Home is not far. The key fits, fits into the lock easily, and with a turn, you open the door. Stepping in, a welcoming smell fills your, not, your senses. This is definitely familiar. This is home. You shut the door behind you and look around. It is a sparse apartment. You are clearly not a person of access. You are filled with excitement at the prospect of learning what you were like as a human. But at the same time, it's still here. The hunger. I'm gonna look for food. Even, he even now, even here, it aches. It paws at you. It growls, demanding attention. The hunger is too much. But you wonder, what sorts of food did you like to eat as a human? As a young one, you still crave flesh, but you can't have it. Blood is not enough, but would human food still suffice? You step into your kitchen, curious. It's a small room, not even a window. A row of cupboards line the walls. You open them up. There's little there but seasonings. You were probably due to a, for a trip to the grocery shop soon. A cereal box sits on the counter, but it's empty for, save for a few crumbs at the bottom. You sweep it into the bin. A kettle, still plugged in, next to a box of tea bags. But you're not thirsty. You're hungry. The refrigerator stands in the corner, waiting for you to approach it. You hope you've got at least a frozen meal in there. You open the refrigerator. To your delight, it's packed full. Packages upon packages, tidily sat in rows. The shelves strain slightly from the weight. Pre-portioned meals. How health conscious. It smells delicious. There's nothing like home cooking. You grab a package, wrapped ever so neatly. You force yourself to unwrap it, gently. Careful not to tear the paper. You're not a monster. You are a human, you tell yourself. You smooth out the wrapping as you unfold it, and it smells heavenly. The liquid inside spills out onto your hand, trickling down your arm. You open it. An arm. Thin. Not much meat on the bone. Lean muscle. It smells fragrant, the natural mouth-watering aroma of flesh mixing in with the scent of lavender. You have fond... Hazy, but fond, memories you can't seem to place, bubbling beneath the surface of your consciousness. You don't think you are a young one. Oh, shit! Oh, Jesus! So, okay, apparently, we were a thingy, maybe that lost their memory, a thingy, a vampire that lost their memory. Holy crap, that was cool. That was a lot of reading, though. <laughs> so thanks for putting up with that. Um, That was cool, though. I like that.
I mean, I love me some vampire stuff. You guys know that. Um, and I love, I love the visual novel stuff. So, uh, I'm interested in seeing what other uh, twists and turns this game has. So, I might go back and play this in my off time. But I, I, I recommend playing this one for yourself. Let me know if you do. And let me know which, you know, ending you guys got. What um, choices you made. And... Yeah, so that's going to be it for me. Thank you guys uh, so much for watching. Please leave a like if you enjoyed this. Um, and if you have any comments, questions, feedbacks, or, or suggestions for games for me, feel free to leave them down in the comment section below because I love hearing from you guys. It totally makes my day when you do. Um, and please feel free to subscribe if you're not already because I would love to have you around. And I will see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.